Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. This time, can anyone be rich in heaven? Well, as they say, you can't take it with you, and any riches you gain in this life certainly don't carry over into the next. However, wealth is a good thing to have in and of itself, so it seems like there would be riches in heaven. Let's see what the Bible has to say about this. Lay not up to yourselves treasures on earth where the rust and moth consume, and where thieves break through and steal. Matthew 6.19 This verse doesn't condemn the desire for wealth in general, but only the prioritizing of earthly wealth over heavenly. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will sustain the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Matthew 6.24 Mammon refers only to worldly riches, which are useful only in this life, but not to the riches of heaven, which are endlessly beneficial. This can also be seen in Matthew 16:26, where a single man's soul is placed over the whole world in value. Also, to serve your own heavenly gain is to do the will of God, since you can't gain any heavenly treasure without doing God's will. So it's not serving two masters to seek heavenly treasure and seek to do the will of God. It's only serving one master, God. But love ye your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing thereby. And your reward shall be great, and you shall be the sons of the highest. For he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. Luke 6.35 This only refers to earthly rewards. Obviously, we should hope for heavenly rewards. Otherwise, the phrase, do good and lend, hoping for nothing thereby, and your reward shall be great, would be almost a contradiction in terms. And he said to them, Take heed and beware of all covetousness, for a man's life doth not consist in the abundance of things which he possesseth. Luke 12.15 Jesus doesn't claim that possessing things in abundance is bad or even unnecessary for happiness, but only that there are other things that make a person alive, things which covetousness apparently endangers. The whole parable that follows and the subsequent verses about not concerning yourself with fancy food or clothing are relevant only to the affairs of this life, which is all about working and sacrificing to attain the next, where such things as good clothing and an abundance of fine food are guaranteed in heaven. However, these are not general rules of thumb in all of existence. These verses continue until verse 31 to 33, where Jesus overtly says as much. But which of you, having a servant plowing or feeding cattle, will say to him, when he has come from the field, immediately go, sit down to meat, and will not rather say to him, make ready my supper and gird thyself and serve me, whilst I eat and drink, and afterwards thou shalt eat and drink? Doth he thank that servant for doing the things which he commanded him? I think not. So you also, when you shall have done all these things that are commanded you, say, We are unprofitable servants. We have done that which we ought to do. Luke 17, 7-10 Jesus explains the unfriendly treatment of servants in his time, but reminds people that the servant accepts this aspect of their employment because of the payment that they'll receive in exchange. For this reason, we also should accept our lot in this life because it's what we need to deal with in order to be paid in heaven. This is right and proper and exceedingly profitable for us, even though God doesn't profit from it at all. So, based on verses like these, it seems clear that those in heaven will have wealth. However, what kind of wealth? Next, what are the riches of heaven like? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.